Three, two, one. Here we go! Ladies and gentlemen, it's Thursday and welcome to another episode of We Talk. I'm Yolanda Nell and I will be your host for today. Today we are talking to Eben Hart about national disability taking place tomorrow and this is a two-part series so do stay tuned for that. Eight young African wildlife veterinarians who recently participated in a 10-day hands-on training course organized by the Giraffe Conservation Foundation in collaboration with University of Namibia, Namibia University of Science and Technology, African Wildlife Conservation Trust and the Namibian Minister of Environment, Forestry and Tourism. During the highly interactive field time at the Tosha Heights private reserve, these young veterinarians were directly involved in building their capacity through an array of wildlife capture, collaring, tagging, moving of animals and much more, while at the same time supporting the conservation management of one of Namibia's largest private reserves. As the leader in giraffe conservation, GCF implements and supports giraffe conservation initiatives in 17 African countries, often working closely with wildlife veterinarians. While most African countries don't necessarily have a shortage of veterinarians, few have specialized skills or experience in wildlife veterinary medicine. The United States handed over 6.9 million condoms and 2.6 million lubricants to the Minister of Health and Social Services to address supply shortages. Namibia has one of the highest HIV prevalence rates in the world and condoms continue to be a health sector priority for preventing the spread of HIV. These commodities are valued at approximately 4.3 million Namibian dollars and will be distributed to 273 hotspots and 14 pickup points mainly targeting key populations that are not yet supplied by the health ministry. Key points include female sex workers, men who have sex with men and transgender people who are particularly vulnerable and disproportionately affected by HIV due to the high risk behaviors, marginalization, stigma, discrimination, violence and criminalization, all of which contribute to a lack of access to health services. The Development Bank of Namibia's Head of Marketing and Corporate Communication, Jerome Mutumba, clarified the bank's role and participation in agricultural finance, stressing that the finance for direct agricultural investments is a mandate held by AgriBank, but the Development Bank can provide finance for agri-enterprise. Explaining DBN's definition of direct agriculture, Matumba says it entails finance for land and agricultural inputs. However, agri-enterprise, he says, consists of adding secondary value to an agricultural operation as well as a resource transformation of agricultural produce. According to him, the bank has a strong track record in the field of agri-enterprise, including finance for abattoirs, feedlots, dairy production and milling plants. They see agri-enterprise as a growth area. Talking about the bank's rationale for participation in the field of agri-enterprise, Mutumba says that Namibia has prioritized food security since its inception through manufacturing, as well as long-standing support to commodity-level processing such as milling, for instance. Snakes of Namibia is a non-profit organization founded in Vintuk in 2013 to help humans and snakes with unwanted encounters while educating the community about the reptiles at the same time. Human-snake conflict is a form of human-wildlife conflict that has not been adequately researched, although the World Health Organization estimates that more than 500,000 people are injured by snake bites on the African continent yearly, leading to death or long-term disability. 
Even that figure is likely an underestimate given the very limited data available from hospitals. The organization aims to reduce the number of potentially deadly human snake encounters in Vintuk by understanding and addressing the root cause of this conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are joined with Ivan Hart. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. On 10 June, we are celebrating National Disability Day. Mm. What is this day all about? This day is a day that our nation has set aside to, um, to bring the issues and uh, the topic of disability up front, to, to give light to it, to give... Uh, the voice to people with disability to be able to um, air their views, um, their opinions and their issues. Yes, um, that's what it is about. Why is it important that we talk about disability in this country? It is important that we talk about disability um, uh, because um, it's for a very long time a topic that has not been really uh, at the forefront. Of course, um, one would broadly say we should talk about we should give voice to everyone yes. to uh, at some point and this is just one of the uh, point or one of the turns we are giving to people with disability to be able to um, shed some light on what, what what their views are you know what, what they want tr how they want treated yes. exactly yes, the, yes. the disability spectrum is quite large there's there's people that's in wheelchairs, there's people that can't hear and there's people that can't see. Mm. And then when you go to the other side of the spectrum, there's people that has um, mental is, yeah. Yeah. disadvantages mm. that, that hamper their development. Yes. How does, does disability look in Namibia in terms of the data available? Well, the, the data available at the moment, it's, it's a bit outdated uh, because um, we last had our census in 2011, um, um, uh, which goes in a 10 year interval, sort of, yes. Uh, we were supposed to have our, our, our census last year, which was canceled this year, it's canceled again. So we, we have an outdated um, uh, data uh, co collection uh, data at the, at the moment on disability and um, to couple up with that the last time we had our census we uh, really there was limited yeah. questions that were asked on disability to be in general, uh, to, to be specific like for example they asked only two questions um, does name have any type of long-term disability or limitation and then the second one because of disability does name have any disability engaging in any uh, learning or economic activity mm. uh, now those two questions are good i mean they're a good start but um, we are moving uh, on as we are thinking more about disability yeah. and how to give voice to people with disability and understanding that we should ask more questions that will help disaggregate data that will help um, uh, pro probe more about disability and I think I'm hoping that when we are going to finally do our census um, soon um, which will be announced soon, we'll be able to ask more questions yeah. that will help um, more, more in-depth questions more in-depth questions that will separate um, uh, people by age yes. uh, by gender and then also uh, separating 
on uh, specific issues that has to do with Namibia, you know. Yeah, but uh, so far, um, it seems uh, because the, the 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 previous data was was or, or previous census was in before 2011. It was 2001, mm. uh, which reported that about uh, um, 42,932 uh, people at that time were people with disability. And oh. then it in doubled, an uh, increase in double in 2011 uh, and, and to 95,041, uh, uh, 95,013,000. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if, you, if you see that doubling, yes. then then we all, government, the private sector, everyone mm. should know that these people can't be shunned from the, from the community. Yeah, yeah. They need to be integrated and inclusivity is such a vital role that, that needs to be played in, in our community. What, mm. what can we do as a society to make sure that all these people are included? Wow! Wow! You you you've just um, struck a note there. The, the the issue with disability is that it can happen to anyone, and when you are at the helm to do something, it's important that you do something about it because um, it, it could happen to you, to anyone close to you. It's a it's a cross cutting um, uh, issue, you know. So, what can we do? Very importantly, we need to put. Uh, in place measures mm -hmm. that we can all agree to that will that, that we that, that will substantially cater for people with disability and those that are vulnerable among us Today's recommendation, we are headed over to Space Charity and they have an amazing event over this weekend. Let's go check out what they have in store. The Space Charity is hosting a charity run on Saturday the 11th of June from 8 o'clock at the IJG Trials. Entry fee is 40 Namibian dollars for children between the ages of 10 and 18 and 60 Namibian dollars for adults. You can choose between cycling, running or walking. SPACE was established for the main purpose of serving the less fortunate children and youth in our country by helping them step out of poverty through encouragement, education and support. Their mission is to create an environment where the beneficiaries involved will have the opportunity to develop their fullest potential. This environment is one where we believe in accountability, restoring dignity and providing a place where they can live out their dreams without being overly dependent on others. We want to serve the beneficiaries in such a way that creates sustainable change for the future without over-reliance on others. The Space Charity has been involved in the community for over 15 years. With international and local partners supporting their impact, the Space Charity is registered as a welfare organization. The charity operates under a board of directors which includes four principal leaders from space schools and they have a team working on the ground consisting of three permanent staff members and three part-time staff members. They highly value their teachers' input and rely on their help to a great extent. They have nominated leaders from their teachers to help out their team when working with individual schools. So get your running and cycling gear ready because it's going to be an amazing event. You can choose between 30 kilometers or 15 kilometers cycling and even a 4 kilometer cycling race or walk or run 5 or 10 kilometers. See you on Saturday. Thank you.
For today's life hack, if you are struggling with smelly shoes, simply take a couple of dry tea bags and put that in your shoes overnight. Next up, Jeanette Dierhardt for Flex Minute. Hi everyone and welcome back to yet another Flex Minute. I'm Jeanette Irghardt, your presenter for Flex and today I will be showing you all some variations that you can do on a chair that will just amp up your workout a bit more and you know just add a little bit more sass to your workout spices and everything. So what we're going to start off with is a normal step up. Now friends, why are we using a chair? Because I don't personally have money to buy myself a step ladder. Normally what the step ladder would look like, it's just this black rectangular thing and if you have that do buy it and if you don't use a chair so we're gonna stop start with a basic step up okay so you're basically just stepping up now with the cool thing with a chair is that you have a lot more height that you have to go you know climb onto so you're working on those muscles but obviously if you have a step ladder you can just you go faster and you're working on those calves as well and then my last one that i'm going to show you guys is just to position one leg on the chair and then lean a bit forward and bring that leg up okay so you're working on those glutes you're working on those hamstrings and you can do that for 30 seconds to a minute whatever works for you that brings us to the end of today's Flex Minute. I hope to see you all next time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the end of my show. I hope you, you had fun. Please join us again tomorrow for the next installment. We will be back again tomorrow, same place, same time. Goodbye. This next song called Take a Chance and it plays on the radio occasionally. It goes like this. Come on over, 
Take a chance with me. 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 